Its look is unmistakable. The red cap bottle with its green foil and trademark diamond logo can only mean it's one hot sauce. Tabasco. It is no secret this spicy, flavorful sauce is loved by many all around the world, especially here in southern Louisiana, where food has been ingrained into its culture. But how many of its residents truly know about the sauce and its history? After all, it is made here. Can you tell me, without looking at the labels of this, what product is this? Tabasco. Is that Tabasco? It looks like Tabasco. Yeah. yeah. That's Tabasco. Tabasco? Yes. Okay. Who was the first person that made it? The McElhenney's? Right, but what's his name? Oh, I have no idea. Absolutely not. Um, no. McElhenney's. What was his first name? Charles. Kenny? McKinney? 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 Do you know how they actually make the sauce? And then they have to pick exactly the right peppers. And then it sits in a vat for I don't know how many years. They like make it from like peppers? <laughs> to some extent. They grow these special peppers, and they process it, and they mash it, and uh, then it comes, they put it in a bottle. I would say crushed red peppers, hot red peppers. Well, I know they put it in the, uh, the whiskey barrels. Well, it's a start. There's only one real way to find out, by going to the source. Where is it made? You're in Avery Island. Avery Island? Oh, Avery Island. Avery uh, Island. Avery Island. Starting route to Avery Island. Edmund McElhenney is the man who invented Tabasco sauce. He was born in 1815 in Hagerstown, Maryland. Disappears from the historical record as a young man for about a decade from the 1830s to 1840-41. But then he shows up in New Orleans in the city directories there as a bookkeeper for the Bank of Louisiana. And he worked his way up the ladder at the Bank of Louisiana and, uh, and just became an independent banker. Probably would have remained in banking for the rest of his life had not the Civil War happened because that pretty much wiped him out financially. He and his wife first came to the island in 1861. Now the Averys already own the island and his wife was an Avery. They came here specifically for the birth of their first child. And somehow out of this desperation, he came up with this really weird idea. Why don't I make a pepper sauce and sell it? I mean, he had no experience as a food manufacturer, no experience uh, as a planter. And, you know, we know he was successful, but he didn't know that he would be successful. So he really went out on a limb. And what a risk worth taking. Little would Edmund know just how successful his sauce would become with a recipe that has stood the test of time since its creation in 1863. The question still remains, how is the stuff actually made? We pick the peppers out in the field. Because red peppers spoil pretty easily, or at least the variety that we use, you have to grind them the same day they're picked and mix them with a little bit of salt. After it's mashed, it's put in the barrels. It goes through that three-year aging process. And the liquid is sent to the factory floor and bottled. Labeled, sealed, cartoned. And sent to markets all around the world. While Tabasco's original flavored sauce has felt cultural impact over its many decades of production, the still McElhenney owned company is constantly looking for new ways to appeal to its consumers with not only new products, but also new offerings right here on the island, like the Tabasco Museum, to help better preserve its rich history. So whether you remember the history of the sauce, its creator, the hardworking people behind its production, or even those who keep its legacy alive, there really is only one Tabasco. <laughs>